All right. Hi, my name is Khalil Thompson, and tonight I'm going to be hosting the sixth installment of Kent State Independent Films Speaker Series. Now, my guest today is a professional music producer who went from making music as a male worker in BBC uh, to the CEO of not one, but two high grossing music companies. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for Russell Emanuel. <laughs> How you doing? I'm good. Slick intro. I like it. Yeah, I, I spent a little bit of time on that. <laughs> uh, hey, let me move over so I'm actually on the screen. There. Look at that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me make sure. Uh, this is... Okay. So uh, where, where are you? Right now, I'm in uh, one of the editing suites of uh, Kent State. Uh, right. It's not too crazy, but they got a couple of sound things. You can record some audio in here, so. Nice, nice. Yeah. What about you? Where are you at? Uh, this is my home studio. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Hmm. Right? That's been it's nice. Not, no, it's not terrible being locked down here. <laughs> I should switch some lights on. It's a bit dark in here. Hmm. Um, so, uh, you reached out to me a while ago. I'm excited to talk to you. What's going on? You seem yeah. like you seem like a man with your engine on. I I, I really want to make sure we uh, we have people to learn and talk to you about, even if they're not here right now live, but just to learn and to meet you, to see right. what you're all about. You know. Yeah. Well, you know, I wish I knew. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still, I'm still, I'm still finding out. And, and so, what are you, what are you studying there? Right now, I'm studying uh, digital media production, uh, pretty much film, just uh, videos and stuff like that. Nice, nice. <sighs> right. So, what, what can I help you with? If well, I got a couple questions here, if you, uh, if you yeah, want to ask me. So, let's do a little introduction. Tell me, tell everybody about yourself. Wow, crikey! Uh, it's it's always interesting to me that anyone really cares. But um, you know, <laughs> I'm 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 more lucky than you know a businessman. I'm I'm more just kind of lucky, really. Um, and you know, I've I've done a bit of everything, from working in mail rooms, selling insurance, selling car wax door to door, to uh, working in studios, some of the nicest studios in the world, just by by chance, and then management. I was a, uh, was managing bands for a while, mm -hmm. and uh, managing celebrity chefs oh. for some for a short period. And then 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 I started the company, which was just right place, right time. I started Extreme Music back in Camden Town with a couple of business partners back in the late nineties, and it did very well. I sold it to Viacom, and then there was a further sale to Sony. And I still run that company. And then I started at the same time a custom scoring company called Bleeding Fingers uh, with my partners, Steve Kosky and Hans Zimmer. And uh, both of those run alongside each other. Nice. Um, yeah. It's, it's all right. I well, actually heard uh, in the news you got a bit of a promotion over at one of your companies. So Yeah, I got a bit of a <laughs> I'd like to say it was well-deserved, but... Mm -hmm. but but honestly, I, I'm not sure it was. I think it was about, I think it was, again, right place, right time, really. Um, yeah, more responsibility. I say more money, more problems. <laughs> I've got plenty so, of problems. So what exactly, what exactly do you do now? Uh, for so, well, okay, so extreme music, I, I, everything I do is kind of in the, in the creating music for film and TV space. Mm -hmm. um, uh, you know, um, extreme music is a licensing catalog. So, you know, we create music. We guess what our, our, our users might want. Music supervisors are mostly our clients, mm -hmm. but ad agencies and you know, TV production companies and film studios. Um, and our goal is to kind of predict what they might want, create it, present it nicely, and, um, and license that music to those TV shows and movies. Um, and that's the, really the primary, very simple job of Extreme. It's a little wider than that, but that's simply what we do. And then Bleeding Fingers creates custom scores. So instead of predicting, we're told what to do. And uh, we score the picture. Uh, we do a lot of score the picture or create, or we create um, catalogs of music for a TV show. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. For example, MasterChef or Lego Masters or we're working on Wheel of Fortune at the moment. And it, there's always something crazy. But but on the custom scoring side, we do Blue Planet, Planet, you know, um, Planet Earth 2 we did, Frozen Planet. Um, uh, where do, uh, I'm always worried that I'm going to say the wrong thing because I'm not supposed to say everything we're working on. But um, yeah. we're doing some big scripted dramas at the moment and a couple of movies. And uh, Bleeding Fingers has, all, I think, 18, soon to be 20 composers in a in a building, twenty studios, just working on TV shows and movies. Wow, that's that's really impressive. It's all right. <laughs> it's not a real job. <laughs> okay, so I'm I'm actually a little curious. I know this is something that it might be a little easy to ask, like maybe a, a college student. But how have you been ha handling COVID? You know, like how has that sort of affected your you're working and everything like that. Uh, well, there's a lot less people to interact with. Um, you know, much the same as everyone. I'm super lucky. I've got nothing to complain about. I got a nice studio, um, and it's not a hardship to be locked down. Uh, anyone used to working in the space is work used to working without seeing people. But I I miss people terribly. Yeah, uh, the spontaneity and the the interaction with people is essentially what I think keeps us alive. And, and uh, we've been very good, very, very, very kind of strict about not mixing and being around people. And, and it, hopefully this thing will be over. Um, I, it, I, you know, it's going to be a long time before we all realize the impact it's had on us all. It certainly changed a lot of things for a long time in the future. Mm -hmm. Especially, I, I, I used to travel almost every month somewhere. I, you know, that's, you know, I don't know if I miss it. I used to love it. I think you're, you know, if you're young and you love, you know, it's exciting getting on planes and going to places. Eventually, it gets old. Um, but that being said, I think in the future, you know, it's, it's an expensive thing, and not only expensive in money, but but expensive in the time that it takes to do those trips in you, in your own time. Yeah. Personally. So I think we won't be doing as much of that moving forward. And that's a bit of a shame. Yeah. I see what yeah. you mean. Yeah. Uh, so although you, you don't really consider it a real job, do you yeah. ever feel like you're sort of overwhelmed with uh, just sort of just running two companies, you know? Cause like, I don't know, for, for me, you know, I'm like a college student. That seems like crazy amount of like a workload. You know, I just, I complain about schoolwork and homework and stuff like that, but you got yeah. two whole entire companies. Yeah, you don't, don't complain because when you need to be a grown up and that, and, and, and doing that work means that you pay the bills, you have to, then mm -hmm. it gets real serious real quick. Um, so you shouldn't complain, but, but uh, I know I always, for some reason, I've always enjoyed working a lot, working hard. I don't, I don't know something weird about me, and uh, I do very long hours, but I enjoy doing that. And I think partly because I don't, I can't say this sounds really trite, but and you hear people say it, and now I'm saying it myself. I'm going to be hazing myself tomorrow, but. You know, I came from zero money, less minus zero money. You know, I came from, sh you know, sharing a bedroom with my brother and an outside toilet, and uh, <laughs> and and the, you know, the guys knocking on the door for the rent, and we didn't have it, and everyone having to be quiet. You know, I came from that. Yeah. Um, and I think here's the thing: I think, and I see it with my kids now. Is, you work, having been there, I think you work a lot harder to not go back there. You know what it's like. <laughs> you got something to like make sure you, you yeah. want to just avoid that at all costs. Like There's nothing more like, motivating than knowing yeah. what it's really like to have no money. Mm -hmm. I see. Yeah, they say they say there's that, and you know, I think the next one is a divorce that will kill you as well. I don't think I'd have to worry about the voice uh, anytime soon. So no, no, I hope not. <laughs> um, 
Okay, so you've been part of music for a while. Uh, I know yeah. that. So what really got you into scoring and making music for films and movies and documentaries? Honestly, what happened was I was in touring. I was I was uh, tour managing bands, mm -hmm. and I was on the road for a very long time. I was a session musician for a while, but I wasn't a very good one. You know, you got all these players that can kind of sight read and have amazing technique, and I could play and I could play in a band and pull it off, but I couldn't do all the couldn't shred like they could. Mm. Um, so for some reason, I then got into tour management and then into management. So I was on the road for a very long time. And uh, it, it, I don't know, it just became in the last few years, I think I was on the road for 18 years. And then the last few years, like, oh, I've got to do something else. And um, I had known about the production music, the licensing music business, for a long time because when I was 18, I worked in the mailroom of a licensing music company mm -hmm. and I'd learned a bit about it then. So it was simply was that, it was a way to get off the bus. I was like, I've got to get off the bus, I'm gonna die. That seems like a nice, easy job, I'm gonna do that. And <laughs> myself and my partner at the time, he was in the band, Stiff Little Fingers, a band called Stiff Little Fingers. You won't know them, but we they were, they were a thing. Mm -hmm. And, um, and we just said, well, okay, let's get off the road and let's start writing music f for TV and film. And that's, that's what I did. He had a little one bedroom studio apartment in central London, uh, which I'm not supposed to run a business out of, but we did. <laughs> and uh, we kind of turned it into a makeshift. It was, it was definitely a MacGyver studio. Mm. We should have called it that. And, um, and that's what we did for a few years. Then we ended up, running that company, the company that we were writing music for, we ended up running it. And mm -hmm. just quickly, very quickly learned the business. No training, no school. I left school when I was 15, by the way. Not, I'm not really? telling you to do that. I was saying, yeah, I, I think it's great for me to drop out. <laughs> <Definitely. graduate. laughs> um, yeah, I was not a good student. You know, I, I don't think I have any, any qualifications at all. In fact, I, not that I don't think, I know I have no qualifications. Hmm. I can hotwire a car. Oh. That's a qualification. I mean, that's I mean that's a skill in its own right. Thank you. I think so. Yeah. So so tell me a bit about the whole licensing process. How would I go about using a theme from either library, I guess? Well, you go to extreme music, extrememusic.com, mm -hmm. find a piece of music that you like. Try it next to your picture, download it, try it if you want it. Then there's a whole licensing, online licensing, or it's simply, it's a bit little old fashioned to some extent. So a lot of people in the States still like to contact a local sales rep, um, which is seems crazy to me, but uh, they still do. Um, and then it's simple that, you know, you say, what, 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 what channel is it on? Mm -hmm. What's the budget? Uh, who's the, you know, what use you want, you know, do you want it for web? Do you want it for YouTube? Do you want it for Facebook? You, there's a whole matrix of rights that you might want to clear. And that spits out a price. Then you pay the price. Yeah. Okay. That's like a little calculator or something like that. Yeah, it's a little calculator, that kind of thing. Okay. Uh, we have a question from one of the uh, viewers. Uh, do you have any music software suggestions? And also, what advice would you give for newbies just entering the music industry? Uh, oh, gosh. Well, I mean, there's the <clears throat> there's the Logic versus, I don't know if you're aware of this, but there's the, the Logic versus Cubase users in, mm. in our camp. Every composer has a preference. Mm. I use Logic just because I came up with it, but um, I, hear, I hear Cubase might be winning that race today. And funny enough, I was just with my... Um, my business partner, Hans Zimmer, mm -hmm. you know that guy, maybe. And he just That's literally, true. I'm only saying it because you asked me something. I sent myself an email because he told me a piece of a software. So I'm sure that his recommendation is um, is much more meaningful than my recommendation. Let me see. I, I emailed it to myself. And of course, now I can't find it. Great. <laughs> This is not slick, is it, at all? Yeah, it's at okay. Least, at least you're getting a real 
uh, Zebra H uh, Zebra is the is the software that he just said go get that today. It's the best. All right. Yeah. I don't have it. I don't know what it does, but he seemed to think it was amazing. And he's Hans Zimmer, so. I mean, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, right. Um, so for the second part of the question, what advice do you think you'd give to any newbies entering the uh, music industry? Um, well, he, he, here's the thing. I think, I think one thing we're seeing, you know, with the onset of YouTube and the, the amount of information that the that, that newbies – can access everybody comes into the business a lot more qualified and actually a better standard of musician and certainly a much better standard of computer manipulator which is essentially part of the job than we've ever seen before because for example and it's only a small example when we used to learn to play guitar we would listen to it on a you know radio or on a record or a cassette and kind of Oh, I think that's what he's playing. We learned it that way. Now you can go YouTube it and know exactly what everything, and which is amazing. So young musicians today are a lot uh, at a lot higher level than musicians, and we're so, unanimously we're all seeing that and now. So, an answer to your question: You've got to be gr you've got to be good. You don't have to be great, but you've got to be good. That's the baseline. Let's accelerate that up to very good. Okay, you gotta be very good, not great. Great is great and is helpful and very good. But what's as important is your work ethic and the way you are with the way you operate in a room with a with many people. As musicians, and I'm gonna steal this again from House because he says this. Um, it's not my guy, you know, the 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 key word in music is play. We play music and we play with people and people are around us. And you've got to be liked. You've got to be able to get on with people. You've got to, and it's absolutely critical. There's so many, I've seen so many super talented people come in and honestly, I don't know if I can say this, but honestly, they're a bit of a dick. And because of that, people don't want to be with them. And, you know, anyway, so there's your, that's, that's my um, no qualifications answer for you. Don't be a dick. <laughs> What's to live by? <laughs> there you go. So I'm not sure if I can ask you this. I put this on the question just because I was curious. Uh, who are some of the uh, the big name customers that you get uh, for either company? Like oh. people that people recognize, you know? Crikey. Um, people that you would recognize. I, um, well, I mean, where do we already start? The BBC, well, you know, the BBC Natural History Unit is a huge customer of ours. Mm -hmm. You know, we're, we're for the lot since Planet Earth 2, which I think must have been five years ago, every year we're doing a big blue chip, you know, frozen planet, Planet Earth 2, primate, seven worlds. Um, uh, we're, we're doing that all the time. And uh, we've got into the future the next four years of natural history programming. So the BBC are a huge pro client of us. Apple, Hulu, Netflix are a big client of ours. Um, we do the, we score, uh, if you know this, we score The Simpsons every week. Oh, yeah? So Gracie Films and Matt Groening and James Brooks and Matt Selman, all of those guys that are big clients of ours. Wow. Yeah. And yeah, you got a you got a pretty impressive uh track record, I guess. I guess. <laughs> um and it, you know, and everything between we're very lucky, you know, we've been going over twenty years, so we've got big big roster of clients. Mm -hmm. So I know like you're not just the only music licensing company out there, but you're definitely one of like the highest like gross like you get like the most like the most money so what's what do you differ what do you do differently than like the other people you know competitors? Oh, this is where you can get me in trouble because i'm going to be mean to the other ones <laughs> um I, I think so long as you don't say names you'll be you'll be fine yeah a lot of it is you know 
look, uh, we, uh, when we started our company, we decided to, to, to not be just in the business to be in business. We're in business because we love music. Mm -hmm. And it sounds like an old hippie idealistic policy, but we burn every calorie we possibly can to make sure that every note is as perfect as we can get it. And we go to extraordinary lengths to do that and to be authentic. Mm. Um, and that was when we started this, we, we love music. We want to be like any other, like a hit making commercial label, but we want to make the music available for licensing at a price point that people can afford. There was, there's a disparity there because most people going out to create labels at that level of quality are trying to make hit records. Mm -hmm. For us, making hit records is a bit like trying to win the lottery. You can do it really, and it really is even more so now. Yeah. Um, so we thought we'd throw all that energy into creating something cool and vibey. It's easy for cool and vibey. I sound like Grandpa Emmanuel now. <laughs> but, but, irreverent, um, understanding that our clients, people that use our music, it's a serious business, but you don't have to take it seriously. Mm -hmm. So we have some fun with it. If you read our marketing, it's, you know, we, we coined the phrase very quickly after we started and we still celebrate it. The bad boys of production music is what people call us. And we still celebrate that today. We're proud of that. I think they were saying it as some kind of, some kind of put down, but for us that was perfect. Like, like you got a bad. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. So anyway, anyway, that's it. And you know, we're very lucky. We've the people that have trusted us with their music are Snoop Dogg and Quincy Jones and Hans Zimmer and Junkie XL and you know, I mean, the list goes on. And and those kind of that kind of talent doesn't go to music production music libraries mm -hmm. normally. I think they go there because they feel it's a safe place. We're not going to, you know, the catalog doesn't range from terrible to mediocre. It ranges, it's it's nines, tens, and elevens. That's what we aim for. You make sure everything's great. Yeah. If you wouldn't, if you think it's like bad or like mediocre, you just wouldn't, you just either give it a bit or just keep well, on working on it until it's like a yeah. 10. Oh, people. We pass on stuff all the time. People think we're snobs. Really? And we are, kind of. <laughs> I guess it kind of had to be. Yeah, you have to be. You can't take it, really. Yeah. <sighs> and everyone, everyone's a musician nowadays. The barrier to entry is so much lower than it used to be. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you've got to be careful. Uh, we have another comment from Amari Hill. Uh, do you have a favorite work that you've done? Do I have a favorite work that I've done? Yeah. Wow. Um, that's like choosing your favorite kid, wow. which I could very easily do, frankly. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, favorite is probably the wrong, the wrong word. Notable and memorable for me is is what makes it stand out, mm -hmm. and. Um, I was lucky enough to produce a piece of music with Radiohead um, for Blue Planet 2, which was undoubtedly a highlight to work with those guys. Um, it was, was very fun. And in the same vein, um, for another BBC documentary, we worked with Sia as well. And... You know, look, I'd be like, everything we do is fun and great, and we're working. And gosh, we do The Simpsons every week. <laughs> How can that not be awesome? Um, but when you get to do big pieces of music with with big worldwide pop stars, that's all, that you know, that's always a trip. Mm -hmm. I guess to piggyback off of the comment, what what is like the one work that you had like the most fun, like from beginning to end? You're like, oh, like I love this, man. You know. Like which 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 one's like your absolute just like like it was a blast to do? 
if I say that, someone's going to go, well, what about that thing we did? And things stand out all the time. You know, I think the product, the, we did a project with Snoop Dogg, which was just a blast. You know, it lasted for about a year mm -hmm. and it was just a real education. It was such a different way of working and put me in situations that I was completely uncomfortable with. <laughs> yeah, um, I remember, I don't know if I can say this. Uh, I'll say it anyway. We did a listening party at the end of the thing in one of our studios. And, you know, Snoop's famous for liking weed. There's nothing. Yeah. I'm not really a weed guy. I wish I was. I'm super <laughs> jealous of people. Like <laughs> because it seems so cool and but it's just not my thing. But um, we're at a listening party, and he spoke to the room. There was about 50 people in the room. And then he passed the joint to me. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it wasn't pretty. <laughs> Let's just say I didn't say no, but should have said no. Oh. Yeah. I really should have said no. I was saying no most of the rest of the night. Yeah. Um, so that was fun. Um, lots of big orchestral projects. You know, we we got to perform the Planet Earth Suite at the Royal Albert Hall um, in London, and that was a that was a big deal. That was a very grown up achievement, but an achievement nevertheless. But it's very wide. You know, I get to work with amazing people all the yeah. time, and there's there's never a dull moment. Every day the phone rings, there's always some crazy new project. Uh, we're doing, I mean, just 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 now we're doing the remake. Yeah, you, you're too young to remember. We we're, were scoring a, the remake of a movie that I saw as a kid and scared the shit out of me, which is Children of the Corn, Stephen uh -huh. King's Children of the Corn. You know, that's a trip. You're doing that one day. And they were doing a big animated movie for which I can't talk about, but it's you know, it's, it's as big as they come. Let's put it that way. So, anyway. Uh, oh, we have uh, another comment. Uh oh, where are uh, these people? <laughs> it's, it's good, you know, we get people talking, they're interacting, you know, yeah. they're learning from you. But are, they, are these people that are in your, your system? Yeah. 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 You know, we, we, we got to learn too, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So uh, she says, who is your musical inspiration and have you gotten a chance to meet them? Yes. Yes. Um, uh, Quincy Jones. And um, and I was very starstruck the first time we met. Oh, I've got a few. <laughs> um, and he's been great and he's been um, a mentor and uh, in fact, I was indirectly chatting with him just the other day, but um, we met, I must have been about 10 years ago. It may have been more, yeah, maybe more, about 15 years ago. Um, I met him here in, in Los Angeles and we did a, a three, three or four albums together and he was amazing. And then um, because I was working at the time with him at the time, I got to fly to London with him. He was accepting an award at the Ivan, called an Ivan Novello Award in London. And I, I got to go to London with him. And it was amazing, amazing. And then he called me up and, um, and asked me to name one of his albums, which is amazing that call. Because <laughs> I can't come up with a name for an album. You're good at that stuff. Come up with a name. And I did, and it was amazing. It's there now. It's um, Soul Bus and Nostra. Wow. And, um, and, and that was a, that was definitely a high point. Sounds like sounds like you're having a great time. Yeah. Yeah, I'm having a great time. I don't so, it, but I'm having a great time. So, how does a what does a normal day look like to you? Um, well, now it's very different than it used to be. Mm -hmm. Now it's, I call it the temple of Zoom. Um, <laughs> you know, I get up, very, I always got up early. I get up very, very, I, you know, uh, five o'clock is generally when I start mm -hmm. at the UK office. And then lots of Zoom meetings, 
lots of talking to composers, giving listening to tracks, giving notes on tracks. Um, till late into the night, generally, till well after midnight. Wow. So not much sleep. Sleep on the weekends. What about, uh, what would a normal day look like? No COVID. What would that seem Oh, like? more, more studio time. You know, yeah. at the moment we can't do sessions. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, we, we can do them small, but you can't have more than two or three people in the control room. So we're all kind of video conferencing into the control room and listening to this. So it's it's weird. Um, but yeah, um, it, it would be the same start time, some calls, then my office is five minutes away. Uh, go to the office and then generally some recording and working with different composers. And, and that's really the highlight of my day. That's what I love doing is just being in the studio, interacting with talent. Nice. So who do you find yourself working with like the most usually? Working with the most? Oh, yeah. the most mostly is the bleeding bleeding fingers composers. There's mm -hmm. 18 of them in there, and there's always different, you know, and and because they're all in the same building, it's literally going room to room, you know, helping, talking, putting groups together. A lot of the shows we work on will need two or three, even three composers, just because of the the amount of time we've got to do the work in. So you've got to get them together and coordinate the sessions and mixing and is it's uh i would say that definitely that is the, that who i'm cook with the most mm -hmm. are you ever in any of those studios you know just like a component oh, like are you ever huh do i have what so are you ever in those any of those studios like composing yourself well i've got my own studio here that's ah, true so you can't but it's just, here look uh, what can you see there's a whole bunch of a lot, of, keyboards, a lot of guitars yeah there's a bear <laughs> holding a guitar you know this so i'm it's i'm pretty i'm pretty set up here mm -hmm. okay that makes sense yeah so do you have like a a favorite guitar like keyboard yes. instrument like what's your favorite <sighs> So I have this here. I'm going to get it. Ah. This is a 1961 P-Bass. Um, it's called a Gold Beauty. It's very, uh, um, very rare. Can you, mm -hmm. can you see that? Hold on. Uh, you might need a back of it. Yeah, I see it. It has the jump man on it, as you can see. Yeah. Um, but uh, this thing, when this is when this is played live, it sounds like a sounds like a a jet engine. <laughs> like, amazing, amazing bass, and beautiful to play. Um, yeah, so this is it. This is my favorite. I'm really a bass player more than anything else, mm -hmm. but only because it's simple. I get it. I get it. Yeah. So there's that. Please don't fall over. <laughs> hmm. So I this this is me, you know. I know I, I've met you before, mm -hmm. I know a bit about like we've talked before. Um I think just as a nice funny little story, you wanna tell people about the uh, the condom story? Oh, what a cracky. <laughs> I, I, I believe it might be I, I think you know it'll be okay. yeah. It follows me around. Um, it follows me around, and uh, I, I I guess rightly so. But when we when we started Extreme in 1997, we had no money, mm -hmm. um, and we were trying to get the uh, the business started. And it was early days, and we had no music because you know in those days, not only did you have to get the music written and recorded, and not everybody had a studio in their house. Right. Um, but uh, you had to then send it away to a CD plant, get it pressed onto CD, get the artwork done, get it put into jewel cases, get it back, send it to the client. They would come back, there'd be a mistake. 
it was, you know, it took months to do that stuff. Mm -hmm. And so although we had some music recorded, we had no music to send clients. And we go, well, look, by the time we got the music, if we then start reaching out to clients, we're going we're gonna to have no one to send them out to. So they're coming in. What are we going to do? So um, we knew that we wanted to be irreverent. We knew that we wanted to be – the word disruptor didn't exist at the time. There was no mm -hmm. disruption. It was destroying, but there was no disruption. Um, so we printed we, – we ordered condoms, and we printed – boxes for the condoms that and it said the only safe thing you'll ever get from us extreme music and we got some uh, industry directories which i think i remember one cost 200 pounds and it was like that was a fortune for us <laughs> we put it on a credit card and then we mailed these condoms out to them to people um and it was quick you know it was the 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 english the British Mail, it was like first class. We did, I don't even know if we did first class posts because we couldn't we couldn't afford first class. So we sent it, you know, second class posts. Mm -hmm. Anyway, we sent them out and thought we were, you know, we thought we were so funny. Um, but then a few days later, the phone started ringing. Um, and there was no websites, by the way, at that time either. It was just the start of that, that stuff. And uh, people go, oh, yeah, well, what, come on, what's this about? Can I? send us some music and we go well look the demand has been so high that all the, all the music all the cds have gone we've got <laughs> nothing left completely out of stock give us your name and all your details and as soon as we got some stuff anyway by the time we had our first disc we had like three thousand names wow people were, and people kept phoning like they would even phone up and go hey i'm just checking on the status of that music is it when when do you expecting it was great it really worked great Again, lucky, um, but and and that story has followed us. Uh, you know, there's a. I did meet someone. I, I can't tell you who it was, but it was a big client, big, big name client. Okay. He, for the, the client was he wasn't the guy who was a music supervisor in that company, oh. and we were at an awards dinner. Um, just an industry awards dinner. You'll you'll get to go to. Them. And uh, I went to the bathroom, and he was in the bathroom. I was like, and we were mates. We were friends. I went, hey, X, can't tell you his name. <laughs> How's it going? And he wouldn't look at me. <laughs> he wouldn't talk to me. I was like, what the fuck? And we'd had a few drinks. And in the end, he goes, listen, I'm, I'm never, I'm not, not only am I not talking to you, you can GFY, and I'm never talking to you again. And anyway, a second, I got it out of him. He goes, it had been an emergency. He had used one of our promotional condoms. Mm -hmm. It had failed on him, and now he had a kid. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. So I'm not sure it's appropriate. But I, so, I, it might be okay for, I, yeah. I think, you know, it might be okay to so say someone, that. So somewhere out there, there's an extreme music kid. Um, I'd love to know more about it. Hopefully one day I will. <laughs> um, but uh, in fairness to ourselves, mm -hmm. we did actually write a disclaimer on the back of the condom that said, if you're stupid enough to use a promotional condom for us, you deserve to get pregnant. <laughs> That's pretty funny. I, I don't know. I just, I really like that story. I kind of like it as well. Yeah. <clears throat> so. I know you can't tell me exactly what you're doing now in terms of like uh, like uh, like what companies that you're working with, but like what's sort of the the process that you go through when you are like coming up with like a music to to make pretty much. Um, well, nowadays almost everything I do is a collaboration. I don't really do any more on my own, mm -hmm. um, but you know. We get to, you know, almost every call we get. There's a uh, there's a brief. There's a there's a a meeting, whether it's Zoom or whatever it is, to kind of talk to the director, talk to the creative team, take the brief. Um, and one of the key parts of the, that job is to be able to understand and translate what they think. You know, you have to remember not well. You you will know this, but not everybody's language is music. Mm -hmm. So 
they'll communicate in different ways. And it can be anything from, I'm, this is, I see this as purple, to my favorite band is, you know, Britney Spears, or um, <laughs> I don't know why I thought that one. <laughs> um, but, but, you know, people communicate music in their own language. Mm -hmm. And they're not saying, you know, uh, you know, this is what I wanted to sound like particularly, but this inspires me. This is a feeling. So, you know, a big part of our job is to listen, listen carefully and decipher that code. Um, and then just get back to the studio, smash cut, smash cut to the studio. We're all, you know, however, whatever studio that is, whether it's virtual or, or real time, we're all sit around kind of what is the sound? What is, what is the DNA of this show? And then we'll start to create tone tracks. Tone tracks are literally just sketches, um, using different instruments or, um, you know, we're doing we're doing a show at the moment about um, gosh, I, it's so difficult because I've got to be careful what I say. <laughs> but but it's, it's, work, essentially, you know? it's about the movement that we're all experiencing now. The change, you know, mm -hmm. the, the change and Black Lives Matter and 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 the road, the path to that, and that we're at a point of sustained change. And you know, how do we do that without being super on the nose? which nobody ever wants to be. There's a big phrase. Every call we get, by the way, is it's time we want to do something different. That's every call we get. <laughs> every, every time they want to do something different. <laughs> really? Um, but anyway, but and rightly so, everybody wants to feel they're, they're pushing, the, pushing the envelope. Or, um, so, you know, what is that? And, and, and then, but they still want it to sound epic and filmic. So they still want strings and they still want orchestra. They want the scale of that. But then, you know, do we weave in inspiration? We're actually using uh, um, gospel choir, um, but not sung to humming as the kind of the basis, the kind of sound that goes through that. And then the jazz inspiration from, from those eras as well, but without it being played. But, you know, as we're discussing it creatively, we go, oh, yeah, wouldn't it be great if we used, you know, ambient jam jazz drumming and then blended it with the gospel choir and then brought in the orchestra to give us the scale and at the moment it's all words and it's all ideas and then you put it together and go oh shit that's amazing we're geniuses <laughs> <laughs> or oh shit that sucks gonna have to start again it's all part of the process mm -hmm. by the way a lot of the time is oh shit that sucks <laughs> that's that's okay. That's part of getting there, mm. as we call it, dialing it in, which essentially means throwing shit at the wall and seeing what sticks. I get it. Um, I'm trying to think of how to word this next question because I worded it kind of kind of weird. Mm. Um, I guess based on your style. And based on the style of other people that you work with, like say Hans Zimmer, Quincy Jones, stuff like that, people, people like that, what do you think uh, someone can learn from each of you guys? I guess. I know that's that's a bit of a weird question to ask. I, I don't know if I. No, I, I don't think it is. I think you know. I think one thing everybody should learn is there's no, there's not one path to the to the goal. Mm -hmm. It just isn't, you know, everyone has a different journey. And um, and as you sit and talk to people, it's interesting. The one common thread is everyone's prepared to put the time. There's no shortcut, sadly. There are incredibly talented people that get there quicker, but that's because they're able to travel the road a little faster, but they still have to travel the road. Right. Um, so don't get into music if you think it's going to be easy because it isn't but once you get there God, I'm, I'm even sounding like I'm there I'm probably not there <laughs> once you get there and all the grown ups are there it's incredible incredible creative space and, and you, you know I wake up every day and the reason I don't mind working 18, 20 hours a day is I feel privileged to be 
doing what I do. Mm -hmm. I see people every day, and, and you will as well, that actually really work for a living. And, you know, I feel humbled and, and in awe of the fact that they do that. You know, real jobs, essential jobs that we need. Nurses, doctors, you know, whatever it is, people serving the community. And so, you know, if I meet someone in my space that's complaining about working hard, doesn't it do, it's not met with a lot of sympathy. Mm. I get what you're saying. It's, uh, I feel like, I don't know, this might be just from, from me and my perspective and my experiences compared to you. I need to make sure I'm looking at the right. This is ah, uh, this is odd. Okay, yeah. Look, from from your perspective, uh, from from me talking about you, I feel like what you do is sort of like, to me, it's just like crazy that you're able to do all this stuff. Like you're able to just say like, oh yeah, you know, hey Snoop Dogg, you want to like work on something? Or like, hey Quincy Jones, like let's 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 name an album together, you know? Yeah. Like, it just seems like crazy. But you're right in the sense of that it's not. Just you just it's not like a snap of the finger and you're in there. It's like you definitely you're not in the circle right away, but you know, if you've got good ideas, everybody wants to work and everyone's rooting for you to be successful. People mm -hmm. aren't rooting for you to fail. That's in England. Here, <laughs> here everyone's rooting for you to succeed. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the challenge is to get in the room, and there is there's absolutely a lot of luck. There's a lot of luck involved. Be, you know, real leaders, I'm not putting myself there, I'm putting the other people there, but real leaders um, want to hear your ideas. They want you to be creative with them and for them. And, and your success makes them seem even more successful. I, mean, I think that's the other thing is that when you, when you do get there, and you, I'm sure you will, you, I know your engine is on, you have to be generous. It's important. And you, you mustn't be scared of hiring people that are cleverer than you. Because frankly, as, as you've already heard, everybody's cleverer than me. I have no qualifications. Um, and then you need to be generous. You know, don't be a megalomaniac and don't be a, a dictator and listen to people and let them have ideas. Um, you, you know, I always remember, and you won't, you probably won't experience this, but mm -hmm. there was a trend. I see it less now. There were definitely, I see it sometimes. There's a trend of people making phone calls and saying, get that guy on the phone for me, and the assistant will phone you, and I'll get the call. Hey, is this Russell Emanuel? Yes. Please hold. I've got so and so on the phone for you. So wait, you phone me to put me on hold. Your time. Is more fucking valuable than my time. <laughs> Are you and I'll put the. I don't care who it is. I will put the phone down on that. But that, that's who you don't want to be. Because it says right away, it's a power play. I'm more important than you. My assistant's going to call you. And and it, you'd be amazed. It will happen. You'll see it. People. I don't know. I think. I think that. That that as an opening gambit tells you everybody everything about person. That's, that's really wow. That's pretty. That's pretty powerful, man. I, mm. I appreciate you like just saying this. Just I don't know. I'm, I'm absorbing it all in. It's really yeah. nice. I don't know where that came from. <laughs> so, as you know, uh, technology evolves. Like people. Like the craft get like changes, you know, the music landscape changes. What are some things that you have have done in the past that you still do now? Like in terms of music and producing and just stuff like that. Wow, that's a good question. Um, well, I think what I think what you're saying is what old practices do you hang on to? Um, you know, the one I think I hear this a lot, and a lot of us still do this, is we'll mix the track and then we'll go and listen to it in our car and we'll check it in our car. Mm. Because that's where you listen to your music, right? Yeah. And if it sounds good in your car, that's the acid test. And, um, and 
funny enough, I was just talking to a headphone company the other day, and they've made headphones that you can actually, the model, different spaces. So you can actually stay where you are and check your mix and listen to it as if you were in your car. Really? Yeah. Huh. Yeah, that's cool. So, yeah. but that's something a lot of us, a lot of producers, a lot of musicians still do. And I definitely do it. Is that the right? Did I answer your question? I don't I think know. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, I was just curious because I figured, like, obviously, you got you, you're a little bit more experienced in this world than me. I figured there's definitely some traditional things that you have just been tried and true that you've done. You know. Yeah. Okay. Well, I guess in the inverse of that question, what are some like new things that you've that's been sticking with you? Oh, man, you know. There's, we move at such a fast pace nowadays, and we it's something new every week. Mm -hmm. I don't know. It's um, oh gosh, I don't know. You know, I'm off the social media train. I was on that train for a while. That is such an empty experience and a waste of time. So that is something new that I did and dropped. Um, yeah, the way we produce music now is is especially your, or if you're doing orchestral music, mm -hmm. the sounds that you can make with the new the new software and the new samples are so close to real <clears> that if you spend a little time manipulating it, you can almost not tell the difference between live orchestra. Now we like to use live orchestra where we can, but on some projects you just don't have the budget. Now you can do a convincing very convincing score without having to use an orchestra. Um, and that's relatively new to me. It's been around for a while, but it's just got so good recently that um, it's got so good recently that, that, that now I'll let a score go without putting orchestra on it. Whereas historically we wouldn't do that. uh hmm, okay so is uh what's like the most crazy out there idea that you've had like the real like throwing stuff at the wall see if it sticks what's like the craziest one that's actually like worked well for you like idea oh, oh my god it's very interesting i'm always having i mean people around me will tell you i'm always reaching high um uh a lot of it a lot of it is I'll, I'll you know I'll reach out to people that I have no I've no hope of getting into in touch with um to do projects and it will come it will come around it will happen mm -hmm. um and that again was probably radiohead was a prime prime example of that um and then Um, gosh, you've really got me on that because there's, there's a <laughs> there seems to be one every week. Um, you know, I, I don't know. We, you know, we've had some crazy ideas about how we create music. You know, a, a, a year and a half ago for a horror movie, we took the inside of a grand piano. You know, the frame with all the strings. Yeah, the little just the things that are just like right. of a grand piano, like a big. Grand, we took the frame and took it out of the piano and used hammers and toothbrushes with engines in them and bows on the strings to, to create sounds that were just unusual and unheard. Huh. Um, and that was cool. And we took the death bell from a monastery and, and brought that into the studio and recorded it. Um, that's really inspired by a lot of stuff that Hans does, you know what I mean? Famously, he set a piano alight to record just for the shits of it, you know. Um, so there's a lot of stuff in that area where we where we where we definitely reach high. I do remember that my hero as a kid, as a guitarist, you'll have to look him up, was a guy called Rory Gallagher. Okay. I'll look this. Rory Gallagher, and he was just Who's who's the one musician in the world that you 
idolize. Oh, that I idolize, like without a yeah. doubt? Without a doubt. Like, like straight up, I don't know. I might, this might be a little too new school for you, but I think I'm thinking of like this one person in particular that I'm thinking of that might be, uh, it's this dude, a British guy actually, uh, Vom Dufel. R O M and then like like wonderful but like R O M Diffle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, actually so, reminds me kind of like he's like a music producer that also makes music. Yeah. Okay, I'll check him out. So so wonderful. So okay, so that guy for me was Rory Gallagher. Mm -hmm. Could do no wrong. He was he was an absolute legend. And um we were working on a project and I want we wanted this. He played a certain style of guitar played slide guitar and he was just unreachable and we just it was one night and we needed a solo and i said i'm gonna reach out to rory gallagher and a day later he was in the studio recording with us wow. and just and that showed it showed me that you just have to ask you can always i can always take a no if you're lucky you're gonna get a yes Fortunately, I've got more yeses than those. <laughs> Had a few no's. A few no's. Yeah. Uh, hmm. I'm trying to think of another question. I want to ask you a bit more about uh, about like uh, Sony production music because yeah, since that's just like new and everything, I figured like you'd probably like how are you adjusting to it? I know it might just be more the same stuff that you've been doing before, but like how have you? Just to like the whole. No, it's, it's interesting. It's, it's week three since they've. I got this um, new area of responsibility, and he, again, I'm excited about it. It was, uh, you know, the, the company that I'm now looking after. It, this new guy is my third job. Um, it used to be the gold standard. They used to be the company that we all looked up to. Um, at the start of doing this, and and it's an amazing brand, um, and I'm just how am I adjusting? I don't know yet. We're in the we're in the the dating phase, mm. um, meeting everyone and understanding what they do, and yeah, and le just learning, and and that's exciting. I love it's great to get up every day and and you know finding out new stuff. It's exciting. Do you have any like new people that you just like uh, study? I guess I'm not studying, but like I'm assuming like a guy like you, I feel like just wants to learn like from a bunch of people as much as he can. So, is there like anybody that you've just been paying attention to, like new that's just uh, like new, like a new artist or something that you've just been really enjoying that you've wanted to work with or that you have worked There's with? There's always so I'm very lucky because what happens with me is. On every project, the client will say, "Hey, have you heard this? This is a sound that I want. Or this is a sound." So I'm always listening to new music, always in all areas. Um, so, uh, you know, the biggest. Uh, this is very predictable as an answer, but I think a huge left turn for the industry. A few years. What is it now? Two years ago was Billie Eilish's album. Mm -hmm. Okay, I know that's predictable and mainstream. You probably think that, but when I when everybody heard that album, it was one of those moments where, oh shit, you can do stuff without it being loud. You can literally produce music on the edge of silence, and it still sounds cool. And it was a huge turning point. And I love it when that happens. That happened. I mean, that happened with Led Zeppelin. That happened with you, you know. There's times. It happened with Queen, it happened. Um, I mean, it's, I, I can think of a few artists where it's been that important. Mm -hmm. You know, Kanye is always, almost always doing that. You know, whatever your view is of him, he's just a genius when it, when it comes to changing the game. And the production on that album from such a young team was so exciting and vibrant. I love it when that happens. And that was incredible what they did with that. And not only that, the songs were just world class. That together with the production being that left field was just an amazing moment. 
So I'm trying to think any other questions. Um, I'm kind of like, I ran, I ran out of questions. Like yeah, that. questions. It's okay. We all got to go to bed. They've been, they've been good. Uh, I guess, let me think. How do you look for like new people to work with? Oh, uh, yeah. that's a good, that's great. A lot of it comes now from the people around me. The best A and R are the talent that we're already using because they're always hooked into. They're always looking for the new sound and, and the new composer and and so now nowadays I listen to them because they're on the ground. And then you know we have teams within our company that their job is just to find and come up with new ideas for production. So I, I think that's how I find it. it. Used to be in ye olden days, listening to the radio and <laughs> buying records. Now it's listening to the, you know, over the years we built a team we trust, and they're very talented, and they're switched on, and you know that that they they become the the divining rod. If that's not too too of an obscure reference, no, I, I get what you're saying. I yeah. know what the dividing rod is. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Look at me coming out with word bombs. Yeah. Amazing. I'm curious. Since you got like a tie out, I'm cu I'm kind of curious to hear you play. Oh, not, well, nothing's really. Uh, my Nothing's really in at the moment. I've got, yeah, I've got a lot of nice. People don't realize this, but I've got this great. Uh, set up where my computer's on top of a uh, 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 Rhodes, which which I love playing. So I'll just food her around like that all day. Mm. See. So you've got a little bit of gospel inspiration, huh? I've always enjoyed me some soul. It's more of the Jewish soul. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to think because you know it's okay. I don't have, I mean, I really don't have any questions, but I. I no, we can cool. revisit this, but uh, I think you've done a great job. Your questions were definitely not boring. Well, that's, that's good. I try not to be too boring. Yeah, that's cool. Uh, hmm, I'm really just surprised. Like, there's not a lot of people showing up right now. I don't know if there's many people watching right now, but it's that's not cool. a lot. That's <laughs> okay. Well, maybe we can pick it up at a more busy time. Maybe. Would you be okay? With, you know, like a, a second one? I might call. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, just email me. You've got my stuff. Yeah. Okay. The one thing I love is the sound of my own voice. So <laughs> it's all good. Well, in that case, unless there's anyone else wants to say something, uh, one viewer. Yeah. It's fun. I, right. I really enjoyed this. I'm glad you and I got to talk again. Yeah, yeah. me too. Yeah, this is definitely fun. You know, I definitely think we could probably do another thing like this next semester. Yeah, yeah. Maybe more stories to tell, more work that you've been doing. Maybe you can uh, finally talk about some of the, the the work that you're doing, the big names that you're producing music for. Yep, yep. Absolutely. Yeah. All right. Well, I guess I guess that'll be it. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you for doing this. It's been fun talking to you. If anyone's watching this in the future, you know, this is going to, this, this is live, you know. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you gained a lot from this. And if you have any questions you want me to ask Mr. Emmanuel right here, uh, just leave them down in the comments. Yeah. yeah. Make them simple, though. <laughs> don't, don't be too hard. Yeah. Oh, right. ooh, wait, wait, wait. Time out. Oh, what's that? Question. Yeah. Uh, so Amari asks, what's your favorite genre of music? Uh -huh. mm. 
How about not ask that question? I don't know if I, it's so weird. I don't know if I have a favorite genre um, because I tell you what I don't like. Okay. Yeah. Like really, I honestly, I really like everything. I'm one. Of, I know that's a boring, super boring. Trad jazz for me has always sounded like a fire in a pet shop. Really, I don't get it. I just don't get it. And some people, I get, uh, but you know, that to me sounds like just showing off. Yeah, I like jazz. Yeah, it's the tr you know that kind of where everyone's playing a different note. It's like everyone's doing their own thing, and it comes yeah. together. It just it sounds like. We're getting in the room and practicing together, but practicing different stuff. Mm -hmm. um, so that that I have a problem with. Almost anything else is amazing, great, and the and frankly, the weirder the better. You know, we're we're like experimenting with circuit bending. You should check that out online. Circuit bending. Yeah. Circuit bending is when they'll take old instruments or toy, even toys, like Mister Spell or what was that spell thing. Like yeah. or Furbies. Oh, no. yeah, yeah, yeah. Open them up and twist them and put them on other instruments, and that's cool. Huh. Um, and then we're doing a lot of kind of going back to cassette, mastering music on the cassette. That's fun. Um, and uh, we have one kind of label that we're producing at the moment called Tiny Noise. And there's no MIDI and no computers attached. That's the rule. And every instrument is coming out of a thrift store or a secondhand store or a yard sale. Like, you know, old you know, bugles off stagecoaches and, <laughs> and beaten up old banjos that have been taken, you know, and it's great. And they have to be super inventive. And so I love that kind of stuff. Accessible, no. A bit dorky, absolutely. Um, but music, nevertheless. And and yeah. by the way, with those kind of limitations, you have to be super creative. There's definitely a lot of innovation you gotta do because you can't just do it the way you normally do it. I mean, I don't know. Can I? Do you? If I play something, have you got share? Can I share sound with you? Uh, I'm not. I'm pretty sure. I mean, your mic's on, so I'm. I I can hear it. Like people can hear it. Okay, let me let me play you an example of that because it's interesting. Let me see. Could I? I have the share screen button. Do you have a share screen button on like the near the bottom of your thing? Yeah. Okay. Oh yeah, some screens let you share sound. Follow these steps. Okay. Screen sharing, share your sound, share audio, share your screen. Okay, I got it. Got it. See if that works. Share your screen. Uh, applications. I'm gonna try something. Chrome tab. Oh, that did not work. Oh, share audio. Got it. Ready? Yeah. Oh, uh, I don't know if it's gonna do it though. Share audio. Uh, uh, oh. Here we okay. Go. Are you seeing my screen? Yes. Okay, let's find this discount kind of label. Tiny noise. This is an example of, of uh, hold on, I gotta open. This is that, this is what I was just talking about. I see just like stuff that doesn't really work great, but you still just like use it. It's just old, old instruments and unexpected instruments. Yeah, I'll move it on. Got it? Yeah. I like it. Yeah. Mellow, yeah. but none of that is created on computers, and I find that interesting. Yeah. It's definitely just a unique thing that you have to try. Yeah. yeah. Um, 
Oh, here we go. Uh, Amari also asked, is there a genre you haven't worked with that you want to work with? Oh. Um. Is there a genre I haven't worked with that I want to work with? Crikey. I've done, I don't, I don't know. We've kind of done a bit of everything. Um, but uh, certainly always open to anything, really. Um, I, I, I would like to try a little more. I don't know if you've heard of any of this ASMR music that, that's ASMR music. I, yeah. I'm familiar with ASMR. I remember that was like a big thing back in like. 20. Yeah, well, now people are just like touching the instrument with the bow on a very high powered microphone and doing some very subtle stuff. I'd like to experiment with that a bit. Yeah. Yeah, I think there, there might be something there. Yeah, it's like that. It's kind of the edge, it's the edge of silence that I think is more everyone, you know, I think that some interesting stuff comes from there. You know, it's like it's like playing a wine glass with your finger or you know, or flipping a coin or lighting a match, you know, the sound yeah. that that makes is super cool. Well, I know what you're saying. That yeah, I think that's definitely I don't know if I want to look. I don't know. I don't, I'm not a big fan of ASMR, but that might be that might be something I have to look into. Yeah, I just sounds unique, you know. Yeah, and there's there's music everywhere. There's music in everything. I think um, it's it's an interesting question. I think you know we've we've worked with the thing about what I do is we have to work with all genres of music, and we do yeah. literally everything. I mean, we've recorded songs in prison. Uh, you know, we've done some crazy stuff just to kind of mount all the bases. Yeah, like mountain churches, and we've been everywhere. You know, old organs in cathedrals, and yeah, um, lots of breaking things. We've done a lot of breaking things. Yeah, you have to listen to business. Yeah. The other great thing is working on The Simpsons, which again is is a real privilege and an honor. Um, you know, if you if you watch that show at all, every week we're doing a different kind of song or some weird, you know, because each show has a kind of story. Mm -hmm. The first one we worked on was a kind of Game of Thrones theme one, but we've done some crazy stuff. The Treehouse of Terror are always a, an adventure. Um, you know, we just did a British theme one. Uh, or with, there's some French jazz version. I mean, we're always doing something interesting. We just did a we just did a Broadway. I'm no, I'm not a big fan of Broadway musicals. I don't know what you think, but mm -hmm. I know people love them. They've never been my thing, but we just did one, and now I'm like, oh, actually, now we've done some of this. It's not it's kind of cool. Yeah. Wow. Seems like you kind of. Kind of really do like everything, huh? We have to, yeah. That's very impressive. Uh, I guess, yeah, like I said. Um, actually, you know what? Huh. I do have something. Uh, I believe it's from back in my, I might share my screen. It's from back in my uh, internship. Oh, God. It's an example of like one of the things that you've done. Uh, oh. It's on uh from 1895. Oh wow! Yeah, that's about right. Yeah, it's a. Uh, it was an example of like you of how uh, your company like works through COVID and stuff like that. It was kind of just like uh, showing how everyone's like playing the instrument and just like scoring while like by themselves, pretty much. Oh, I'm gonna see if I can share my screen. Is that easier with two monitors? Yep. Oh, I can do it for this one. Give me a sec. Oh, snap. All right. Boom. Okay. Sharing the screen. You see this? Oh, is that out? I didn't know that was out. Oh, is it? Mm. Great. Well, if it isn't. No, I'm sure it is. I'm sure it is. That's why it's there. Okay. All right. Well, then, uh, I guess everyone have a listen. See. Oh. Oh, I pressed the wrong button. 
Uh, all right, and uh, I guess take a listen. Let's see. You gotta send me a link to this. Oh yeah, definitely. I don't think we're getting your audio. I think you have to. Oh. Yeah. Oh, we're not sharing the audio. Oh man. Yeah, it's in that screen sharing thing on the left hand side. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, oh, I see. Full screen layout. Uh, no. Man, I thought this is weird. Okay, you said, how do I do this? I think I found it in screen sharing, and then, and then it was in. Give me a quick second. I'm going to do it again. Which means Shadio. This one, this one, and then we just uh, I don't know if I'm getting it. Oh man, it's really embarrassing because I really want to show it because it, it sounds incredible. And I, I I'm I'm it's just like technical difficulties. Um, yeah, we did this. Um, we did this um, at the start of COVID, mm -hmm. and, and you know we needed to score this space um, show about the Apollo missions, and uh, we couldn't get an orchestra together, so we had to record everybody, the whole orchestra, in their own homes. So we asked them to film their performance and then send it into us so we could edit it together um but it sounded amazing it was really great oh here it is there we go now it should be working yeah yep. I sense that in Alan Shepard's flight, that as it got down close to zero, that the engineers were so worked up for fear, each one for fear that it would be his system that would cause a catastrophe. Thank you. 
Cabin holding is 5.5. Cabin 5.5 pounds per square inch. Oxygen go. All systems go. From the periscope, what a beautiful view. That's a little. This, this is a little something of what comes out of Vessel Mandy, Vessel Manuel Studios, and stuff like that. Uh, you know, just a quick. Yeah, that was very fun. That's a very fun project. We've been doing a lot of space recently. Um, a lot mm -hmm. of space. Uh, love doing that stuff. Uh, I was about to say, you seem like it seems like there's a lot of times when you guys are just doing, uh, like you're saying, like Planet Earth and like these grandiose things that need like a orchestra and all this thing. I feel like that's, I feel like you're getting uh, like a lot of work in like your orchestras and all, yeah. getting a bunch of people to play like violin and viola and just strings and percussion and, you know, brass and woodwind, all that stuff. Yeah. No, I'm very lucky and very privileged. Uh, nothing quite like a working with an orchestra. Sounds sounds incredible. Yeah, very nice. Well, I'm surrounded by good talent. Cool. All right. All right. Well, that's a nice little finish, I think, to this. Yeah, that was great. Thank yeah. you. Um, yeah, let's do it again. Let, hit me oh, up. Okay. Yeah, no problem. All right. Uh, I've been Khalil Thompson, and this is Russell Emanuel. And this has been, I don't know how to end this, what, take six? No, not take six, because this is first take, this is live. This is the end of the sixth edition of the Kent State Independent Film Speaker Series. Nice. Russell, well, have a good night. Thank you. You too. Have a good one, man. See you. See you later. See you.